Hey guys, it's Jason, JC316. Today I'm going to be showing you all how to change the timing belt on a Ford or Mazda 2.3 liter engine. Uh, this particular car I'm working on is a turbo coupe, so I've got the turbo, but this should be the same job on the naturally aspirated models as well. Uh, Ford Ranger and Mazda B2300 should use the same motor. So, first things first, we're going to want to set the engine to top dead center. Now to do that, you align the mark with the top dead center mark on the um, thing there. I'm sure there's other ways to do it if this is already off, but this is how I'm doing it. Now I'm not sure if I have it 180 out or not. I'll probably find that out once I get the uh, cover off. Okay, the book says that you're supposed to take the thermostat housing off and drain the coolant, but honestly, I think they're full of crap. I don't see why you'd have to. Yeah, I may be wrong. If I am, I'll get to that whenever I get to it. First things first is you're going to want to loosen these nuts off. A lot of people take the belt off before they try this, and it's a mistake because trying to hold the pulley and get the bolts broke loose is not easy. It's going to be a 13 millimeter, and there's just four of them, and try to give it a good yank so it doesn't slip. And you just want to get them loose, like so. Now we can uh, take the belts off. and. Uh, there are two belts. Uh, this one going to the AC shaft. I'll have to move this tensioner down. And this side is the other tensioner here. Now those look like 15 millimeter bolts to me. And a little bigger. Sixteen millimeter. Just press down a clockwise rotation on this side, and the belt will slip off. And the main belt is counterclockwise. No, nope, it is clockwise. The belt clockwise. Okay, now that the belts are off, we can go back to the water pump pulley. Take these four bolts out, and the pulley should just slip off. Somebody's already had this off before, which isn't surprising since it has 116,000 miles on it. Uh, my camera looks like it's got a funky setting. I'll be right back. Okay, it's back. It looks like the camera's microphone was off, but it's not. All right, so we're. Taking that last bolt out, and now the water pump pulley should just come off from there. These can be froze on a little bit. Um, may have to rock it a little bit. I'll need both hands for this, so I'll put you all back here.
just gonna give it a little tap with a wooden mallet here and just try to break it loose. There's a pressure plate that goes on the front that'll fall off. And there it is. And here's the plate. It just disperses the pressure over the pulley. Okay. Now we're going to, have to get the belt tensioner out of the way. There's a bolt around back that holds it on. But I think I can get away with just taking the uh, pulley off from it. So I'm going to do that. I may wind up having to take the whole tensioner off. But for now I'm just going to take that off. Okay, now we got to take the cover off from the timing belt. There's a Phillip head screw here, a larger one, and a 10 millimeter bolt here. And then another 10 millimeter bolt right there, and then another one right there. Kind of hard to see, but they are there. So as soon as I take those, well, okay, scrap that idea. I got to take the, um, harmonic balance are off first. This is not a split cover. So we'll be taking the harmonic balancer off. The harmonic balancer is a 22 millimeter bolt. And usually these things are all in there. So I'm probably going to use an impact to try to get it off. I'll be right back while I set up my tools. Okay, we're back. I've got the impact on there. Now a lot of mechanics will tell you not to use an impact on this particular bolt, this harmonic balancer bolt. I tend to agree with them when putting it back on, but when taking it off, I just use the impact. It's easier than trying to hold the flywheel and everything. I'm working alone, so this is the better way for me. Do this however you want to. Don't blame me if your car gets broke. I'm willing to take the risk. Okay. Now, Julia, how my balancers are pressed on. 
but this one's not. This one you just pull on and it comes off. <clears throat> yeah. It's not even a harmonic balancer, it's just a pulley. There's no rubber on it at all. It must have a balance shaft. Okay. Now that that's off, we can take the timing cover off. And again, it's what I said. Bolt there, a bolt there, one there, and one right there. So, back over here. Somebody has definitely had this off before they did tighten these back up. Now, this is a large bullet head screw. I'm willing to bet this was a, uh, another 10 millimeter bolt at one time, but they either lost it or broke it and changed it out with a screw. And once all that comes off, the cover comes off. All right, now, you'll be able to see the um, timing system. On um, mine, some dirt daubers have made their nest up in the timing system, which obviously is not a good thing. Yeah, it does use a balance shaft right here. That's what drives the distributor. So I'm gonna remove the dirt dauber nest. On mine. I don't know if you can really see it, but my, my belt is all cracked up, and there's some pretty good flex there. The belt's just bad. All right, now I think, I think I'm 180 out on my crankshaft right now, I think. Let me consult the book and make sure. So I'm pretty sure that is supposed to be pointing to that, unless it's like that. Let me consult the book real quick and find out what's going on. Okay, now I figured out how to set this up on top dead center. I'll show you. I'm actually off a little bit right now, but there's a notch right there, and then another notch right here. Now these two, with a straight edge, are supposed to line up. As you can see, I'm off just a little bit. Now that's on the cam. On the crankshaft, let's see if I can show you this, but um, It's not any good. Okay, there's a notch right here, and then there is a corresponding little mark in this cover that's supposed to line up with it. I'll show you the mark on this cover. It is right hmm. camera's having a hard time picking it up but it's right there and that is supposed to line up with that notch and it'll be in top dead center I need to go about a tooth to the clockwise direction to get mine to line up 
I'm gonna do that real quick and then I'll show you the rest of this job. Okay, I'm back and something didn't quite feel right about the way that timing was set up on top dead center. I pulled the distributor cap off and sure enough I was 180 out. So my first instinct was right. That arrow is supposed to be there. The um, guide pin there is supposed to line up with that. And then it's at top dead center. Book gives wrong information about that. So, now we gotta get the timing belt off. So to do that, we gotta release tension off from the auto tensioner. Now, there is a 13 millimeter bolt up in there, and then this bolt right here has to be loosened. Both of these have to be loosened. This one is a 11 16 bolt. Now, you need to loosen them off just a turn, because what we're gonna have to do is press on this and press it that way, and then tighten back on that 13 millimeter bolt to lock this thing in while we do our work. There is a tool that they call for in the um, book, but I didn't have the foresight to go get it and I really don't want to try to track it down right now. So I'm gonna do something that I don't recommend. I'll do it, but again, this is a, if you break your car, don't blame me on this one. I'm going to take a breaker bar. I'm going to wedge it in between the sprocket here and here. And I'm going to press back counterclockwise on it and loosen that off and then tighten the bolt down. Again, I don't recommend doing this. If you do it and you break your car, don't blame me. Okay, doesn't take much pressure to do. Okie doke, now that that is done, the belt should just slip off. Now you want to try not to turn anything. There's always a way to do it if you do accidentally turn something, but just slip the belt off. Yeah, you'll probably have to pull that guide plate thing down. Off. Now I'm gonna need both hands. Be right back. Okay, I'm back. And the belt just got twisted up on me. And again, I don't know if you can see the cracks, but this belt is completely shot. So that slipped off. Now, I did not follow my own advice and I bumped the um, balance shaft, the secondary shaft, and moved it out of the way, which is quite honestly very easy to do. So, what you're going to want to do is Turn that until you get it back to number one 
on this. Now, my distributor has been turned and I haven't really bothered to turn it back, but uh, it'll be pointing at the um, number one plug wire, in which my case is here. Uh, on your case, I think it should be here if it's done correctly. So, yeah. Now, on the Ranger models that have the, um, the, uh, what is it? Distributorless ignition. I don't know if it even has that shaft, but if it does, then you'll, um, there'll probably be a time and mark that you have to line up, uh, just like the crankshaft and the camshaft sprockets. So, now I'm going to have to slip the new timing belt on. Try to get grease on it. And I'll slip it on the bottom and then go clockwise up to this and then around this and then finally around the balance shaft. Now this may be a bit of a tricky procedure with again not turning that but um, just be patient and get it right the first time. So I'm going to see if I can get y'all in a position where you can see what I'm doing. Uh, to a degree. Maybe the best I can do right now. Mm -hmm. I think you can need directionality when you first get it, but I'm just kind of, it's kind of bent in a funky way, and that's the way it goes around, so I'm going to install it that way. And you make sure all your timing marks are lined up. And you go from there. Okay, so, and I actually went around the crankshaft first, around the ballot shaft, up and over, and then back on here. That's the best way to do it. And you'll kind of have to get it on there and then pull the belt toward the front of the car and then slip it over this shaft. And then, yeah, that'll do that. Now I should just have to loosen this bolt off and get it to tension over and then uh, spin it a couple of times. Now I'm going to double check all the procedures in the book and I'll be right back. Okay, yeah, exactly what I thought. You loosen off on this, let the belt go over, then we're going to rotate the crankshaft two full revolutions. And uh, the time and mark should all line up. It should be pointing at number one on the cylinder and then we'll tighten these bolts back up and put the rest of it back together and we're done so where's there it is ah, there went my tripod alright got that kind of loosened and gonna give it a good 
push to make sure we're okay. This looks a little funny to me. I'm just going to put some pressure on it while I turn it and see if it'll seat. And again, this may go wrong. I don't know if it does, but if it does, start over. Don't get frustrated. Getting frustrated and making mistakes is one of the worst things you can do on a time and belt job. Stuff in my sprockets, that's never good. One rotation. And the whole point of this is to get all the slack out of the belt and then tighten everything up. Two rotations. And I am a tooth off. So I'm gonna have to retime the entire system and then do the two rotation move again. Yeah, I'm definitely a tooth off right now. So again, mistakes can happen. Right now we just gotta reset it to top dead center on the bottom, set up the camshaft put the belt back on and redo it so I'm gonna do that real quick and I'll be back okay finally got it toward the time of marks align it took me about four more tries and about an hour to do it the time of marks are all lined up so we tighten up on the uh, not there and then tighten back up on that one and then put everything back together and that should be that so yeah just don't get frustrated and make sure everything's lined up because the last thing you want to do is have it off a tooth and have to tear it back down thanks for watching hope it helped sorry for all the mistakes it was my first time doing this job bye, -bye.